Drinking water is essential to our everyday lives and understanding concentrations, particularly small values like parts per million and parts per billion, help us to understand pollutants and other types of contaminants that can be in our drinking water. There are two levels that we're going to talk about. One is the MCLG, which is the maximum, maximum contaminant level goal. And this is where if we're below this level, there's no known health risks. There's also a maximum contaminant level, and this is the maximum that is allowed to be in our drinking water. There's several different contaminants that are monitored. So one of those is coliforms, which is a type of bacteria that comes from human and animal waste. And although they're not real likely to cause disease, it does tell us that there's an indication of other pathogens that could cause disease that are present in the drinking water. And so our goal, the maximum contaminant level goal, is to have zero samples in an area to have coliforms. Now the one that is allowed, maximum contaminant level, is 5% of samples are allowed to contain coliform bacteria. Chlorine, here the goal and the level are, are the same as each other, so four milligrams per liter. And this is another way of representing parts per million as milligrams per liter of water. So four parts per million is the goal and it's also the allowed level. And chlorine is added to water to be a disinfectant to, pre to prevent bacterial growth. Trihalomethanes, there's a maximum contaminant level goal of 0 0.07 parts per million and the allowable level is 0 0.08. And it's byproducts of disinfectants that, are, that produce trihalomethanes. Lead, our goal is zero parts per million, but the allowable level is 0 0.015 parts per million, or 15 parts per billion. And this happens from the corrosion of pipes that bring the water into the into the house or into the, the facility. Now you might ask why is the level allowed higher than our goal and a lot of this has to do with um, regulations that are passed by the government. And so the allowed level sometimes is higher than what the goal is. Now to keep water safe, most cities have a water treatment facility. If you live in the country, you're most likely using well water, which does not undergo water treatment. But if you live in the city, then there is water treatment before it makes it to your house. So it starts with water that comes from lakes or rivers, or it can be pumped from underground. It is, passes through a screen to help remove large debris or fish or anything else that might be in the water. So essentially we're filtering it through a screen. There are coagulants that are added and these are added to help pull small particulates out of the water to remove dissolved substances and dirt. The water then passes into a holding tank where the coagulants are allowed to work and, and allow larger particles to settle down to the bottom of the tank. Once the sedimentation has happened and passed through that tank, we go through a filter which can be made of carbon, sand, gravel, and this is to mimic what happens with groundwater when it passes through different levels of 
dirt and gravel and sand and rock to make it into the water table. It's an early filtration system. We then adjust the pH by adding either chemicals to make the pH higher or lower depending on the levels that are present. We add anti-corrosion agents, which are phosphate-containing compounds, and this helps to prevent lead from leaching into the water. And then it is chlorinated to help kill bacteria and viruses and prevent waterborne diseases. After it's chlorinated, then it is piped out to the residents' houses. The public water system and the water treatment plants are only in place to ensure that the water is safe when it reaches the edge of your property. Once it crosses from the public water system into your house, then it is up to you to make sure it is safe from that point on inside your property. There are many different types of piping that can be used and a lot of it depends on the age of the house. So PVC or plastic piping, polyvinyl chloride, is a newer way of bringing water into the house. There are also brass and copper water lines that can be used. Copper tends to be a little bit more expensive at this point in time. The older your house is, the more likely it is that you could potentially have lead pipes that, that transport the water into your home. So you may have heard of the Flint, Michigan water problems. And the problem with Flint, Michigan was that when they were on Detroit water, or when they were getting their water from the city of Detroit, it was being treated with phosphate corrosion inhibitors. So the phosphate is a compound that when it reacts with lead, it's, it's insoluble and it precipitates out on the walls of the pipe, protecting the water inside the pipe from lead getting into it. When they switched water systems, so they went from Detroit, treated Detroit water, they went to the Flint River water, there was no corrosion inhibitor added, but the high chlorine levels allowed those protective layers inside the pipe to be oxidized with oxygen and lead started leaching from the pipes into the water supply. Allowed lead to be making it into people's homes to be consumed. This was also a problem with iron pipes as well. Well water is not treated. So if you live in a rural area, unless you have some sort of treatment that you provide yourself, it is not treated. You can test the water to see if there are any issues with it. And frequently, if there are contaminants, what is suggested is that you use a reverse osmosis system. So osmosis is when solvent molecules tend to pass through a filter membrane towards a less, towards a more concentrated solution. So they'll go from a less concentrated solution and the solvent will move towards a more concentrated solution to try and even out the concentration. Reverse osmosis works by applying a force to push the solvent molecules from a more concentrated side to a less concentrated side. And so 
Usually this uses high pressure in order to, to purify the water for well water. You may have heard of water being referred to as hard water or soft water. Hard water contains dissolved calcium and magnesium ions, and that's why it's referred to as hard water. Hard water forms precipitates, so you'll frequently see white solids that form because of the presence of calcium and magnesium. In white water, the water is very hard, and the reason for this is because there's lots of limestone in the area, and so as the water passes through the limestone, it dissolves a small amount of calcium carbonate. That calcium carbonate, when it's in the water, it will precipitate out or form a solid when the concentration of water decreases. So this is like the, the white floaty things you see in your water or the, the solid that forms around your pipe or around the faucets. This is calcium carbonate, which is limestone. Now, in order to remove the hardness from water, we do something called softening it. Softening it works by taking zeolites, which contains sodium ions, and the zeolite exchanges two sodiums for one calcium. So our charges have to balance. Two sodiums will be released and a calcium will be bound to our zeolite. This allows us to remove calcium or magnesium from the water. And this is how water softener systems work. Once the sodium is released, that's carried along with the water to the drink to, to where you're using it. Now, most of the time, soft water is used in bathrooms and hard water is used in kitchens because hard water tends to taste better. Soft water doesn't taste as, as good. But the reason we want it to be soft is because it allows soaps to work much better. So when we have hard water, soaps won't lather. You'll have lots of spots and residues or your clothes will look dingy after you wash them. And it does contain more minerals like mag magnesium and calcium. And as I said, it is a preferred drinking water. It tends to taste better and it doesn't have any adverse health effects because you're getting extra calcium in the water that you drink. Soft water, when we pass the water through a water softener and the zeolites help to remove the calcium, this allows the water to lather better, your glasses look cleaner, clothes look fresher and crisper because the calcium will make the soap precipitate out. It'll make the, the soap not stay in solution hair will look healthier. It does contain sodium and it's not recommended to drink if somebody has high blood pressure because they try to limit the amount of sodium in their diet or in the water that they drink. So both are healthy for you to drink unless you have high blood pressure. Now that we've talked about chap chapter 10, you should be able to understand the relationship between atmospheric and vapor pressure, to identify how boiling point changes with altitude, describe many different things that make water unique, including surface tension, capillary action, density, explain why heat capacity is different for water and sand. 
know what a sol sol solvent and solute are and be able to calculate different types of concentrations.